video. I know it's been a long time and there is definitely a reason for that. And part of that reason is kind of the premise of this video as well. So the subject I'm getting ready to talk about is a little bit of a touchy one for me because it's something I'm still kind of discovering in my own life. And being honest, I feel a little bit stupid. <laughs> I really do kind of feel a little bit stupid because, you know, I feel like I go through this quite a bit and, you know, and it doesn't stick and then I go through it again and then it doesn't stick and I keep going through it. And so, yeah, I figured, well, maybe if I come out and talk about it in terms of video, maybe this time it will actually stick and it needs to because I really, I, I really can't keep doing the same thing that I've been doing. Things have to change. And so, yeah, this is kind of my attempt to deal with that. So the topic of the video today is emotional vampires and creativity. And I do think that it is kind of a really important topic to talk about just because as someone who is creative, as someone who, you know, like everything that I do, everything that I desire, everything kind of about me, you know, involves some form of creativity. And so, you know, although I like to think of myself more as a logical person, like when it comes to creativity, like atmosphere, setting, you know, everything kind of has to be situated perfectly for me to be able to function properly in that realm. So, you know, this topic of emotional vampires is really, has really kind of become more of a big deal to me. So yeah, I, I really feel like I need to talk about it because I know that I'm not alone. Like I, I, I absolutely know that I'm not alone in the struggle that I am feeling. So, you know, as I said, this is kind of a way for me to work things out for myself and then maybe, you know, my struggles will, you know, come across for others who may be struggling as well. And, you know, maybe it will spark them to start thinking about it, or maybe they've already gone through it and they're sort of like, girl, you can definitely get past it. <laughs> Either way, that would be nice. Or maybe you've not struggled at all, in which case, you know, I, I think that is amazing. And I would admire that so greatly because, you know, like I said, or maybe not like I said, but <laughs> creativity is one of those things where, you know, there are like, it's a hard thing, not the creativity itself, but I think getting people around you to understand you as a creative person can be very difficult. So, you know, I more love the stories of people that are creative, that had family and friends and things like that, that, you know, kind of nurtured that creativity and, you know, really kind of helped push them toward, you know, that creativity and what they're doing for creativity, because I definitely have not had that experience. And so, yeah, I, I, you know, those that were able to just do it and then, you know, like I look at them and now they're so much further than, you know, than I currently am. Like I, I find it to be amazing, which is why I'm talking about emotional vampires. So essentially, you know, to start, I am not an expert and this is not a how to, I'm just someone going through it and, you know, it's kind of, you know, above my head, above my, my pay grade, you know, that expert realm kind of thing. But, you know, I do think that picking at certain problems and things like that can help give you deeper and better insight into just yourself as a person who's going through things. And that is what, you know, it, that's what I'm doing for myself. I'm kind of picking at this and figuring out ways of getting past it and getting through it. Certainly, you know, 
because I keep, I seem to keep going through this, I know that that means there's something about me that continues to, you know, attract emotional vampires and, you know, and it makes me deeply susceptible to it. And I need to figure out what that is. And then I need to find a way to kill it and then move on with my life. So yes, all of this is for that reason alone. And so part of the reason that I'm doing this video is because I was on Twitter and, you know, I don't know if I mentioned this on, I don't know if I mentioned this on the video, but or in a previous video, but maybe a year or so ago, I'd actually shut down all my social media accounts because I cannot stand social media. Twitter in particular is just a cesspool of garbage. And so I really, 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 really wanted nothing to do with it. And I was content to do it. And I'm still, I'm still really content not to do Twitter, but you know, I've, I've kind of come to the point as a creative, you know, platform building is something that needs to be done because at this point I am a self-published author and self-publishing, you know, means having a place where people who read my things or people who are interested, you know, need to be able to come and I need to be able to interact with them. So yeah, that means social media even if I don't necessarily like social media. And yeah, that, that leads me to having opened a new Twitter. And so I did that. And one of the conversations that I saw as I was scrolling through just happened to be about uh, Young Rippa and, or Eric July and the new comic book company that he's launching, which I'm actually really excited to see his growth on that. I've, I've, I've watched his work on and off. So just the growth that he's had, I just, you know, to a degree, I kind of sit a bit in awe of that just to see, you know, someone just pursue what they pursue, what they dream of. And just, you know, like I said, people who've not had to struggle the way that I struggle, I admire them greatly. And I love watching them continue to grow and flourish so yeah he announced of course that he was you know he was taking pre-orders for his Ripperverse comics line and of course you know you're gonna have your individuals that are not going to like it that are going to call him a grifter because of course you know he's not doing it the way that they want him to do it i.e he's not bowing down and kissing the ring and there was a comment from uh, Disparu, who's also a YouTube channel. I don't know much about it because I've only seen a couple of his videos, so I'm just kind of getting to know him and his content. But like he's, um, and most of what I know him for is his commentary on the new Lord of the Rings series that Amazon's trying to do, which I know I did a video in the past saying that I might give it a chance, but <laughs> being honest, that's never happening. Just the more I look at it, the more I see it. And, you know, I guess I'll kind of blanket statement for a lot of those other previous videos where I kind of said, oh, maybe I'll check it out because that goes for Disney Plus with their Marvel things and the Star Wars things. Yeah, I never did. And I'll just say that I never did. I looked at it or... I looked at the landscape. I didn't look at the actual properties, but I looked at the landscape and I pretty much figured, yeah, it's not worth my time because it's like with comics. Why am I going to continue to subject myself to, you know, properties that make it clear they are being run by people who hate me? So yeah, no, not doing it. And power of like rings of power, I was about to say power of rings, but rings of power. Yeah. That's also on my list of things that I'm just not going to do. It's like, I, I, I can't be bothered with it. So that's that. So yeah, that's where I know Disparu a little bit of. And so he was making a comment because of course, you know, 
people who want to take risk can't come out take risk without other people you know deciding that i need to shut you down whatever it is that you're doing and so Desperu made a comment about emotional vampires and how emotional vampires project their insecurities onto people and it was like i can't find the tweet at this point i know i would have to do some serious looking it up and i'm just i'm, I'm feeling kind of lazy so i don't want to do that but I would say that that really kind of hit me hard because, you know, as I, as I said at the beginning of this video, I've gone through this problem, you know, more than enough times to be concerned that, you know, because it has definitely become a pattern. And I feel really stupid because I see it, I know what it is, and then I just keep letting it happen over and over and over and over again and you know no matter how much i remind myself exactly of what he said that it's emotional vampires and that they are projecting their insecurities onto you it just didn't stick so hopefully hopefully this time it does stick and yeah because i don't want to get i don't want to get off topic but that was the key takeaway about emotional vampires. And so, you know, attached to creativity, yeah, it, it makes total sense because I've, I've t I know I've, I've talked about it definitely in my regular life and I might've mentioned it on a video or two here, but you know, I worked an office job for, six years and you know i i did not want to do it i mean and at this point it's kind of like i went to college and i really kind of feel like i i regret even going to college you know because for the longest time since i was a kid i knew that i wanted to write and you know part of what actually got me really writing as a teenager was finding put together books that I had done as a kid because I had a stapler and I had regular uh, loose leaf paper. And so I would put them together and I would staple them like you would a book and I would try to make different stories. And so, you know, writing just kind of was something that I really wanted to do. And I just, I've always, I've always known it. And, you know, because it's something that's not easy to do it was very easy for family to kind of come in and try to discourage me from doing it. And I, I think that's kind of like maybe the biggest reasons that people don't really fight against their emotional vampires. It's easy to, like, I feel like it's easier to do if it's a stranger coming at you because they don't know you. They aren't someone that you really care about their opinion anyway unless you're just someone who's very sensitive to other people's opinions in which case yeah a stranger's opinion of you could definitely throw you for a, a loop but i i would like to think that overall you know most people don't really spend a lot of time worrying about or caring about what other people have to say about them if they're strangers you know family friends that's a I mean that's a completely different thing because these are people that you know love you that these are people that you know you feel like they have your best interests at heart and so in a lot of cases it tends to hurt worse when you don't feel like they are actually accepting of what it is that you want to do so you know growing up it pretty much was you had to go to college and you know i now have this this theater degree undergrad that i've done nothing with and i knew that i was going to do nothing with you know by the time i graduated because i had lost all interest in theater as a result of going to college <laughs> And, you know, but I didn't lose my love of writing, but then I got into the job and it was a job that I didn't want, but it was a job that I was encouraged to do because of course, 
you know, if you have to go to college, then you have to get a job because that's just what you have to do. And getting an office job and earning a salary is just what you have to do. It's part of being an adult, you know, do it. And, you know, as I was always kind of told, well, you can write and work a job both. So like how, F, like, like, how could you not? And, you know, this was always amazingly done by people who were not creatives, had like had no dreams of doing anything creative, or if they did, they had long given it up. So to them, of course, I should just be able to do both of them. And the answer is I was not able to do both of them. Now, I will acknowledge that there are actually plenty of people who actually can and you know, sort of like with those who've not had to struggle, I admire them greatly that they've been able to work jobs and, you know, gain salaries and still be able to write things. Like, I, I feel like on paper, it should be easy to do, right? It, it, it should be easy. You, you know, you go to work, you work your eight hour, your, yeah, you work your about eight hours or so and, you know, you come home and maybe you get a little bit of writing done and, you know, you have the rest of the night to yourself. And I tried that for the six years, but, you know, all I kept finding was I wrote less and less and less and I had less creativity and I had less desire to write and I had just had more, you know, exhaustion and more irritability and, you know, depression and, and yeah, and nothing I did was creative. And I, I, I found that I, I couldn't even, I got to the point where I couldn't even, I couldn't even open up the Word document to even try to get any writing done. And that is, you know, literally the place that I found myself. And, you know, at that time, of course, you know, I, um, like I, I ended up doing uh, like a couple of writing workshops, hoping that it would help and things like that. And, you know, and it was funny because even at that time, there were a few people and, you know, they were they were strangers. One was a former boss that I had who ended up working elsewhere, you know, but I remember we ended up seeing each other at this event and we were talking and because he knew that I liked to travel and he knew that I, um, you know, that I liked this more kind of casual way of doing things of like being a risk taker and, and getting out there. And like, I wasn't someone that was likely desiring to really settle. And, you know, I remember when I was saying, yeah, I'm working full time, you know, and I remember him just looking at me and just saying, oh, why would you do that? Like, you know, essentially like, I mean, he had a full-time job and he was doing something that he loved, but you know, for him to just be like, why, like, why would you, why would you do that? Because obviously, you know, to him, because I guess in that way, he kind of knew, he kind of more knew me that it, 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 it didn't make sense for me to have a full-time job. And then, like I said, I went to a writing workshop and it was sort of the same thing. You know, I had this editor looking at my work and the first thing he said is, why are you working a full-time job? You know, and it just kind of, it just kind of at that time kind of amazed me because it, it really was sort of this thing of, well, but isn't getting a full-time job what you're supposed to do? Like if I'm not working a full-time job, then how can I, how can I save up money and travel like I want to? If I'm not making money, how can I relax and, and do the writing that I need to do? And the answer was, well, I didn't do any of it, <laughs> working a full-time job. And I, and I did, I never, any of the things I wanted to do, I never actually did working a full-time job, but I always did it because the emotional vampires in my life kind of just made it clear that it's just what you had to do. And so, yeah, I, I, I think, you know, when it boils down to it, because it is sort of the thing of, um, and I do want to talk a little bit about, you know, tackling this kind of emotional vampire thing, because, you know, 
I would say I would say I'm a I'm I'm definitely happier now than I was back then and that I have and I feel like I have a lot more freedom because I don't have the uh I don't have the stressing and straining of the full time work that I had before that that killed all my creativity and trust me I've I've tried working other things and doing the same thing thinking okay let's just you know let's do some quote unquote respectability and yeah that it doesn't work with my creativity so how do you tackle dealing with emotional vampires because I do believe that that is kind of the biggest thing and so you know for me I'm looking at it in kind of this way of you know one asking myself who am I and what is my dream because you know this is something that I've wanted to do I mean one can say my whole life since discovering books since discovering writing since you know since dreaming I've, I've always I've always been somewhat of a dreamer so you know I would say for me, the desire to be creative is much more powerful than anything else I would want to do in life. Like the standard jobs and things like that, I really have no interest in doing. And I, I don't, I, I have no interest in doing them. And even having tried doing them, I just, I, I have no interest. I have no desire. And I would much like, and I would never give it, I would never give those things my all the way that I want to give my all to things like writing. So, you know, understanding that about myself, you know, I think has really kind of been the major push of what's kept me moving forward. And so, yeah, I, 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 I think in tackling my modern day emotional vampires who, you know, want me to do what they want me to do, because essentially that is the thing they're projecting their insecurities on you. So essentially they wouldn't want to, they wouldn't want to take risks. They wouldn't want to, you know, possibly not look respectable. They wouldn't want to do, you know, things that would make them seem flaky because I mean, let's be honest, if you're going to be an emotional vampire and if you're going to talk about what someone else is doing, you're probably, you're probably a little bit judgy. <laughs> So, you know, so you're going to feel like you're going to feel like people are judging you for what you're what you're deciding. So, of course, you're going to turn that on to other people. So, yeah, you know, keep it in mind who I am and what is my dream and, you know, understanding how powerful that is. Yeah, I, I do believe that that's going to keep me going because, you know, number two, what they're not offering what they're not offering is a compromise. A lot of them will make it seem like they're offering a compromise. You know, it goes back to the, oh, well, you can do both. You can, you know, you can work a full-time job and you can write. How can you not? You know, everyone can do that. And they'll make it seem like you're an odd person because you're not, you know, you're not doing what they think is doable, even though it's not something that they do themselves. So, understand like they're not asking you to compromise what they're asking you to do is give up you know that part of you that may actually make you you and I'm, I'm I'm speaking specifically about creativity because you know I I think with people who tend to be creative it just is who you are as a person and one can say it's kind of a personality type and so what you're really being asked to do is give up that personality type Give up your personality and become who they would want you to be. And it's, it kind of becomes their demand of you. Give up who you are. Do what we think is best for you. Do what we say is best for you. And, you know, in a lot of cases, pretend you're not miserable. And that's kind of what you're offered. Pretend you're not, pretend you're not miserable because you're making a salary. Pretend you're not miserable because, hey, you can pay your bills. Pretend you're not miserable because, well, when people look at you, you can talk about the job you have, not the creative things that are flowing through your mind. It, it's, it's not a compromise. And certainly for myself, reminding myself of that 
it's not a compromise because it isn't a compromise. They're not asking you to compromise. They're not asking you to do anything other than to bend the knee. That's it. So one and two are <laughs> thoroughly, I think those are probably the most important things to keep in mind. Number three also for me would also be something keep remembering that they're projecting their insecurities and that's the that is the point they are projecting their insecurities on you so um years ago when i was doing my masters of divinity i um had to read a book called the dream giver as part of one of the classes and one of the things that really kept sticking with me and it goes with the whole emotional vampire things you can kind of like call the titles interchangeable but um in the dream giver it, they were called border bullies but it was really sort of the same premise as emotional vampires these are people that you know they might surprise you for who they are because you know they would be close friends close family you know people that love you people that you know love you people you know that you know that that people that you know say that they want the best for you and really believe that they want the best for you and you know you know that you know logically that they are doing it because they want the best for you but their words are basically killing you because what they're telling you is you know give up what it is that you want to do in this idea that you can remain with them in this sense of safety and security and so you know some of them may have talked about dreams they had in the past and those dreams are not even where they are and they've given up on them some of them may have accomplished their dreams but they just don't see any value in the dream that you're trying to pursue for whatever reason that they don't see the value of it you know in any case it still is the same thing of they are projecting their own insecurities that the problems that they have with it really are their own problems it's not something that they would do they wouldn't do things because that that really kind of boils down to you know if you're someone who's a risk taker if you're someone who doesn't mind you know a bit of a struggle if you're someone who you know going full steam ahead is just who you are as a person and you are ready to take on the world by bulldozing every you know bit of resistance in front of you you know that can make people feel uncomfortable and you know people who definitely love safe the sense of safety and security that's going to make them really uncomfortable because you know if there's something that they've been struggling with then it would likely remind them of their own. And, you know, I, I think that kind of would hold true for, for anyone, you know, as much as I admire watching people, you know, who are creative advance and push forward and, and grow, it also has had by contrast made me feel a bit uncomfortable myself because it basically, it basically continues to tell me what's your excuse. Why aren't you doing the same thing that they're doing? And, yeah, that, that, that becomes the thing. Now, you know, the difference would be, I'm not really interested in telling them don't do it. In fact, I'm, I'm more continue going, you know, show me the roadmap kind of thing. I'm, I'm ready to run right behind you, you know, but not everyone's going to be that. And so you kind of have to, you're going to kind of have to come to the conclusion that number four and this kind of is me going off my notes but as I'm talking about this and thinking about this this is sort of where I'm going with it you kind of are gonna have to be okay with the idea of distancing yourself from your emotional vampires it's going to have to happen because you know one thing that I would say your close friends and family are not being emotional vampires because they're, you know, because they have malice toward you. Strangers, yeah, all day, every day, they it could literally be malice. 
you know, it could just be because they don't like you. It could be because they disagree with you politically. It could be any number of things, you know, that they're, that they're trying to stop you from doing what you're doing. But still, you're going to have to keep your distance because what you're never going to want to do, and this is, I go back to, this is kind of the thing that I have to learn and continue to learn for myself. I can't keep allowing myself to be thrown back into a tailspin because, you know, very easily I could be in a conversation with someone and they will just say something. And it's clear they're saying it because they're really thinking it and they really want me to just give up what I'm doing. And they really want me to just do what they want me to do. And, you know, their mind keeps going back to why can't I just listen to them and just do what they want me to do. And that kind of, that, that really does throw me for a tailspin for a while because I have to keep processing those emotions and feelings that they keep throwing on to me. So yeah, number four, understand you may just have to be distanced from some of the, the emotional vampires in your life. And, you know, I, I really kind of think, cause I really kind of think in a lot of cases, it will actually improve your relationships with some people because when you get to where you're going, they will have no excuses anymore to continue saying what they're saying. And for you, when you're not constantly having them in your ear, telling you what they want you to do and what you should do and trying to, you know, take you out of where you're going, you can concentrate on what it is that you need to do. So yeah, I would, definitely say I would definitely say that yeah those are probably the things moving forward I'm going to keep in line I'm going to keep in mind not in line that I'm going to keep in mind you know when it comes to what I'm planning for myself for the future because certainly I do have a plan and I am you know currently tackling the plan so yeah, I, I, for myself, I will need to get control of myself because, yeah, maybe I'll throw this in as a number five. Number five, don't think that you can change your emotional vampires. Don't think that you can do it. I've tried it so much and I would say that... <coughs> I would say that the biggest contributor to a lot of the struggle that I've had is this idea that I, I think that I can, ch that I think that I can maybe not change their minds, but maybe I could get them on side and it's never happened. And at this point I've had to come to the conclusion, it never will happen. So you cannot please your emotional vampires. So yeah. Number five, you can't change them. You can't please them. You're just going to have to understand that. You cannot change them. You cannot please them. It's not going to happen. No matter what you do, it's not going to happen. <coughs> so understanding that, yeah, it's going to have to, it's going to have to be understood. You're not going to... You're not going to please them because anything that you do, and I'm currently learning this, anything that you say, anything that you do, because it's not what they want to hear, it's not going to please them. So yeah, refer back to number one. That's number six. Remember who you are. Remember what you want to do. Keep in mind how powerful that desire you have is. And, you know, maybe I'll throw it at number seven. Keep it moving. No matter what, keep it moving. Do what you need to do and keep it moving. At the end of it, you know, when you've tried everything that you could, if you still fail, but you've tried everything, I, I do think you would still feel value in what you went through because you had the chance to do it. You had the chance to pursue. You had the chance to just be you. So in all things, yeah keep it moving 
and do what you're going to do. And that's, I guess that's it for my advice, not advice corner. Cause I didn't want this to be like, cause I, I'm not trying to give advice or anything like that. I'm just trying to, you know, use some things in mind for myself. So, you know, yeah, that's going to be it for this video. Cause that's really all I kind of wanted to talk about. And if you made it this far, thank you for listening to my scripted sort of rambling a bit. And yeah, I guess I'll see you in the next video, which should be a much lighter topic because I, I really don't want to do things that are very heavy like this, but I do believe that, you know, sometimes it has to be said because in order to move forward, sometimes you got to deal with the, uh, the heavy things in your life so you can do it. So that's it for this and see you on the next video. Bye.